Dari Usman ibn Affan berkata, Aku mendengar Nabi SAW bersabda, Sesiapa yang membaca, Bismillahilladzi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fis sama, wa huwa sami'ul alim. Yang bermaksud, Dengan nama Allah, Yang dengan namanya, Tidak ada sesuatu pun yang dapat memberikan kemudaratan di bumi maupun di langit. Dialah yang maha mendengar lagi maha mengetahui. Sebanyak tiga kali, maka dia tidak akan ditimpa bala yang datang secara tiba-tiba sehingga subuh. Dan barang siapa yang membacanya ketika subuh sebanyak tiga kali, maka dia tidak akan ditimpa bala secara tiba-tiba sehingga petang yakni malam hadis rawahu abu daud menurut syekh syuib al arnud hadis ini adalah hasan assalamualaikum and good morning children okay uh, we are back again to Perlis Tuition Online in English Language and I'm Cikgu Azrul Rizal Azizi Okay Okay, today uh, the topic we are going to discuss today is comprehension questions and types and how to answer Okay, I believe comprehensive question is the uh, item that your teachers have already covered in school Memang Cikgu-Cikgu kamu dah jadi sekolah Tapi sekarang adalah uh, lebih kepada re- asset revision, ulang kaji dan juga uh, mungkin ada tips daripada saya yang boleh membantu kamu macam mana kamu nak jawab soalan comprehension, comprehension question, the types, jenis-jenis yang akan keluar selalunya atau jenis-jenis yang ada dalam uh, comprehension question dan bagaimana kamu boleh menjawabnya dengan lebih berkesan. Okay. So, shall we get down to business? First and foremost, uh, saya akan introducekan dulu apa dia comprehension question itu dan jenis-jenisnya. Okay, sebenarnya kamu perlu tahu benda ini sebagai uh, knowledge, okay, pengetahuan supaya kamu boleh tackle soalan dengan lebih mudah. Baik, yang pertama, soalan factual. Dalam comprehension question, dia terbagi kepada 8 tapi saya akan sentuh yang akan berkenaan dengan kamu saja. Untuk sekolah rendah Dan mungkin kamu akan boleh guna pengetahuan ini hingga ke sekolah menengah okay? Yang pertama factual Soalan factual ini adalah soalan yang straight forward Soalan yang straight forward dan soalan factual adalah soalan yang easy It's easy for you to answer Usually you can look for the answer straight forward from the uh, text given okay? And then there's another type of question that is called inference Inference question is a little bit difficult Okay, sedikit susah because you have to look for the clues. The answer is in the passage itself, but you have to look for it. It's not a straightforward uh, question like factual. Bukan macam factual yang kamu boleh ambil bulat-bulat jawapan, tapi dalam inference kamu perlu cari di mana ada clue dia. Yeah? Where is the clues and you have to put it in your answer. Uh, we, we we shall go through that all uh, afterwards, okay? And then there is true and false. This is a, in the the easiest type of comprehension question. You just have to write down whether it is true or false. Just tick cross, or just tick correct, or just write true or false. But it depends on the sentence structure itself. Bergantung kepada ayat yang ditanya, susah atau senang, dajah soalan tu. Okay. Kemudian kita ada sequencing Kamu perlu susun semula satu-satu peristiwa mengikut bila ia dilakukan Atau kan kronologi cerita itu okay. Sequencing And then you have matching Okay, matching Selanjutnya matching ni uh, sentence to sentence part to sentence part Okay And then we shall look through the question like higher order thinking skill atau hot atau kebat kemahiran berfikir aras tinggi baik ini adalah soalan yang susah uh, maksud saya susah sini bukan soalan yang susah yang kamu tak boleh jawab no kebat question or hot question are not difficult question but 
is the type of question that you have to do a uh, little bit more thinking kamu perlu berfikir satu arah dua arah tiga arah untuk menjawab soalan dia bukanlah soalan yang susah cuma you have to do uh, you have to do a lot of thinking to really answer the question okay usually it comes uh, under cause and effect relationship dinyatakan sebab bila kita kata cause and effect kamu tahu ada because okay uh, Uh, for example, kita tahu why is Ali late to school today? Uh-huh. He is late because he misses his bus. He misses his school bus. Okay, you have to cater the question. And then there is before and after. Making comparison to identify details in a sentence in a text. Okay, okay. Now, if I Uh, explain to you one by one here it is not very clear to you so shall we go to the question proper okay number one um, if you can please read this together with me okay this is a simple simple text talking about uh, children and sleep get tired easily the following are important tips that can help you overcome your tiredness watch your diet You are advised not to take too much food that contains carbohydrates as it will make you sleepy while fatty food will make you less energetic. It is good for you to take extra fruits and vegetables as they provide us with vitamins and fiber. Get enough sleep as for children they need at least 8 hours of sleep a day. However, some adults might need less than that. Exercise regularly. To have a fit and healthy body, you need to exercise regularly. Having a healthy body also give you a healthy mind. So, badan yang sihat akan menyebabkan otak yang cerdas. Okay, you have to take note here that uh, when you read a passage, a comprehension like this, sometimes uh, there are a few words or sentences that we are not very clear of. Don't worry. Okay, don't worry. You must at least get the whole, the general area on what you are reading. That is very important. Okay, this we are talking about uh, children, the importance of sleep. Okay, how to get rid of tiredness. To get rid of tiredness. If you get tired easily. These are few points. Okay, when we read, usually when we read, uh, If there are uh, important points that you think is important, but it's easier for you just to highlight, okay? Just highlight what are the important points that you think need to be highlighted. You just highlight. For example, like this: as children running eight hours sleep a day, okay? You highlight if you think this is an important thing in what you have read, okay? And then. We look at a question now. <clears throat> answer the question below and write your answer in the space provided. How long should a child sleep in a day? How long should a child sleep in a day? Okay, if you look at if you look at the thing that I, I highlighted here, as for children, they need at least eight hours of sleep a day. That is the answer. Now, what we are discussing here is when it comes to question, how long should a child sleep a day? And you just write down there. As for children, then it is uh, what to say is not accurate. Tak berapa tepat. Okay, kalau kita ambil sentence, we just simply take the sentence from the passage itself and paste it in the answer. Uh, it we call direct lifting. Okay. It doesn't show that you can really answer the question. It shows that you know the answer, but it it doesn't uh, uh, show the your capability in writing the sentence. Okay, now how to write the sentence? Okay, these are the steps that you need to take when answering comprehension question. Step one, you have to read the whole text given. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you understand or not. The second thing, but you must read the whole text given to get the whole idea, and the words are there, up there in your mind. Then step two, you have to read the question given. 
read the question of course if you don't read the question how are you going to answer the question right and then what to do next look for the answer in the text i put that a answer the question asks how long should a child sleep in a day and automatically this is uh, the first type of question that we discussed just now the easiest part of question okay <coughs> And then you look for the complementary of the answer. What are complementary? I will show you afterward. And then you must write the answer in full sentence. Okay. For example, how long should a child sleep in a day? The answer would be eight hours. That is the answer. Okay. When we are talking about examination wise, if you just simply write eight hours, meaning you will not get full mark. But now we are talking about knowledge wise okay <coughs> and then the complementary will be in a day pelengkap kepada ayat complementary pelengkap kepada ayat i hope we can jot down this okay how long should a child sleep in a day the answer will be eight hours and then the complementary pelengkap kepada ayat in, is in a day tapi ayat masih belum lengkap eight hours in a day Okay, I know uh, teachers in school have shown you how, how to write this thing. Okay, you should write like this. A child should sleep 8 hours in a day. You just take it from the question itself. But if you take the answer straight from the text given just now, it will be not very accurate. It will not be very accurate. Okay, this is how you write the answer. Step 1. Uh, sorry. Uh, how long should a child sleep in a day? You give the answer, 8 hours, complimentary in a day. It's actually, it's already in the question. And then a child should sleep 8 hours in a day. Okay, I hope we have jot down because we need to use this in the next slide. Okay, next. Now, we go uh, to exercise. Now, you, you already know how to answer uh, correctly, properly. Now, we shall go to the next text. Kids can earn money too. How can I do that? You ask. It's very simple. Read the following. Help your parents at home. Okay. Ask your mom and dad if you can help you with chores like washing dishes or cleaning a porch. Cleaning the porch. Some parents give their children money to do simple tasks like doing the laundry and wiping the windows. There are many things you can do around the house. Tapi yang ni saya nasihatkan jangan ikut lah. If you do something at home, buat dengan ikhlas. Jangan minta duit pula dengan mak ayah, tolong. Nak nak lah cuti ni. Okay. Wash cars. As for children, cars, uh, uh, are, your ch are your neighbors car dirty? Offer to wash their cars for some money. It is fun and you can even ask your siblings to help out. Okay. Tolong basuh kereta jiran. Dapat duit. Kemudian, sell your old things. If you have toys, books and belongings that are still in good condition, you can sell them. Ask your parents to help you open an online shop to do to do this. Okay. Kamu ada pencil case lama? Yang masih elok, masih boleh dipakai, tapi kamu nak beli yang baru. So, yang lama ni kamu boleh jual kepada kawan-kawan. Okay. Dengan harga yang berpatutan lah. Kemudian, Sell art and craft. Okay. Don't let your talent go to waste if you are good in making things. Making greeting cards, bookmarks and uh, red jewellery to sell. You are only limited to your imagination. Okay. Saya pernah buat ni. Kita buat uh, bookmark daripada mana lakat dan kita boleh jual daripada kawan untuk dapat extra income. Okay. These are the texts you read. Just now, uh, we did discuss that we have to read the whole text. So, whether you understand or not, that is... Uh, other matter okay second uh, you have to read and get the whole idea then we look at the question okay now we are going to that second type of question that we discussed just now making inference make inference and give own opinion okay ini soalannya agak sedikit susah kerana kamu perlu membuat inference uh, kemudian kamu perlu memberi Kamu punya pendapat sendiri Soalan yang macam ni Sebenarnya jawapan ada dalam teks The answer is in the teks But you have to uh, be wise To pick up the answer And write 
the sentence. Okay, whom can you sell your arts and craft to? First question, whom can you sell your art and craft to? Okay, kalau kamu buat craft tangan, pada, pada siapa kamu boleh jual? Okay, pada siapa kamu boleh jual? Okay, cara kamu nak jawab soalan ni ialah you list down the answer. Okay, to whom we should sell this craft? Of course, to your friends. Just now we mentioned friends. And you can sell this craft to your neighbors, jiran-jiran. Okay, kemudian kamu masukkan apa yang dia macam tu. I can sell my art and craft to my friends and neighbors. Okay, jadi jawapan di sini ialah friends and neighbors. That is the answer. Whom can you sell your art and craft to? Friends and neighbors. So you take from the question itself. I can sell my arts and craft to my friend and neighbors. Okay. This is the type, uh, the question that we say just now, make inference. Okay. Make inference. And then look at this next question. In your opinion, what is another way for you to earn money? Just now, it is mentioned here, so many ways in how are you going to make money? How can you make money? Extra income. But in the question itself, it is asked, what is another way for you to earn money? So you just cannot just simply take the answer written in the text. Another way, cara yang lain untuk kamu Membuat duit dalam soalan Kamu perlu faham What is the meaning of another? Satu lagi cara Okey. Kalau saya tanya kamu Apakah cara lain untuk buat duit? Ini yang dia kata Soalan yang ada sedikit Atau soalan yang ada Meminta kamu untuk melakukan Kamu perlu berfikir Maksud saya You have to think of the answer Okey, ini yang kita kata soalan kebat tu. Dia bukan soalan yang susah. Uh, kamu fikir apa yang kita boleh buat? Contoh dia, okey, kita minum air mineral. Kita ambil botol tu untuk apa? Kita boleh buat apa dengan botol yang kosong tu? Kita boleh buat craft dan jual atau kita boleh terus jual we can sell the bottle to earn money. So your answer will be like this. I can sell used plastic bottles to earn money. Okay, this is the simplest way for you to answer the question. Okay, tapi kalau kamu nak menjadikan uh, jawapan kamu lebih menarik, boleh. You can change the word sell to the word that you learn in school. Okay, what we do with the plastic bottles, we, we recycle them, right? So, kita boleh guna perkataan itu. I can recycle use plastic bottles to earn money. This is another way for you to earn money not mentioned in the passage just now. Okay? I hope you are clear. Now, look at the E question. This is the matching question. I'm not going to take long time to discuss about this because it is a very simple question actually if you can understand what uh, each of the phrases or the sentence here tells you. How to answer? You have to look for the one that you are sure. Okay, there are three sentences you have to match here. You have to look only for two. But then you look at the easiest one, one to match. Don't let your talents go with waste. If you have talent, okay, if you have talent, so you are good at making things. Okay, are your neighbor cast dirty? Senang tadi ada dalam passage. Apa kita buat? Kalau kereta-kereta jiran kita kotor, we offer to wash their car for some money. Okay, yang ni pun senang. Jadi kamu, yang ketiga ni sebenarnya kamu tak perlu fikir pun. Kamu dah boleh uh, cantumkan tapi tengok betul-betul mungkin akan berlaku kesalahan. Some parents give their children money. Okay, to do simple task. Inilah bentuk soalan yang kita bincang di awal tadi that we discussed earlier on. It is a matching question. Matching question. Very simple. Okay? Um, I hope everything is clear up to this question. Okay. We shall move on to the next one. Okay. Now, uh, 
I did tell you about KBAT question just now. We did discuss a simple KBAT question. But now, this is the type of KBAT question usually asked in a passage. Okay? And you need to have this knowledge to answer. Okay. I give you a simple advertisement here. Saga Complex, this says We are not going to read through everything because we are going to focus on question E. How to answer. From, from the three gifts, which one would you prefer? Give your reason. Daripada ketiga-tiga ini, hadiah yang ditawarkan di sini, yang mana kamu mahu pilih? Okay, yang mana kamu paling suka? Baik, dalam soalan macam ni, kalau dalam perpisaan kamu pilih yang kamu senang untuk memberi jawapan. Okay, tapi di sini kamu tengok, ada empat, tiga benda di sini. Tepung, uh, softlan dan juga colgate. Okey, bila sampai soalan macam ni, soalan kebat ini, kamu perlu memberi jawapan kamu sendiri. You have to give your own answer. So, think of the easiest way to give a reason. Why are you choosing that item? For example, here, I will go through with you. I will choose the toothpaste. That is my answer. The thing that we discuss, answer, complementary, and you have to write in full sentence, right? So, if I choose toothpaste, why? Why? Give reason why you choose a toothpaste. Okay? We use toothpaste to brush our teeth to get healthy teeth. So, you just write, use it daily for healthy teeth. So, that is your answer. I would prefer the toothpaste as I will use it daily for healthy teeth. Okay, that is how you write the answer. Now, mind me to remind you again that kebat is not a difficult question but a question that requires you to think. Okay, kamu perlu berfikir untuk mendapatkan jawapan. Kalau kita hanya tunggu dan cari dalam teks yang macam ni, kita akan jumpa jawapannya. Kamu perlu berfikir. Okay, next. Ni kita kata soalan hot so atau kemahiran berfikir aras tinggi. Next one. Baik. Kamu ada buku sastra, literature on Akbar. Okay. Akbar is an 8 years old Indian boy. He likes to weave third clothes. Her dreams, his dream is to make the most beautiful third clothes in the whole of India. His grandfather would like to help him achieve his dream. He plans to take Akbar to the Taj Mahal to get some ideas. Okay. They wove a set clothes and sold it to Uncle Omar in order to get money to buy the train tickets. When they have, when they have saved enough money, they travel to Agra by train. On the way, Grandfather tells Akbar the story of Shah Jahan who built the finest tomb for his wife. Kamu tahu apa dia tomb tu? Yang kita tengok, Taj Mahal tu, itu kubur sebenarnya. Ya? Kemudian, Akbar hopes the Muslim will give him ideas to fulfill his dream. When he sees the Taj Mahal, he gets inspired. He gets inspired. He sets to work on the patterns and the colors of the shining jewels he sees on the marble walls. His piece of work turns to be extremely beautiful. His grandfather and uncle Omar are amazed with his masterpiece. Akbar is very happy as his dream had come true. Okay, kita pergi dengan laju tadi. Saya kata kita perlu baca keseluruhan teks untuk mendapatkan jawapan. Next question. If you are Uncle Omar, what would you do with Akbar new design? Why? Jika kamu Uncle Omar. Baik, kita tengok sini tadi. Okey, kita cari mana Uncle Omar. Hmm. Okey. Ni Uncle Omar. Okey, kamu perlu highlight kan apa-apa saja yang berkenaan dengan Uncle Omar. Okey. Mani Nampak? Okey. Kemudian, tengok ni lagi. Uncle Omar was amazed of the masterpiece. Why? Because it is extremely beautiful. Okey. Now, we look at the question. If you are Uncle Omar, kalau kamu jadi Pakcik Omar, what would you do with Akbar New Design? New design? Baik, tadi kita bincang pasal answers and complementary. Baik, dalam bentuk soalan macam ni, dia sebenarnya ada tiga ni. Dia minta... Kenapa uh, kalau kamu jadi Pakcik Omar, kamu nak buat apa dengan hasil kain yang cantik dibuat oleh Akbar itu dan kenapa? See, ada soalan satu lagi, why? Baik, 
tengok soalan betul-betul kemudian answer buy them as they are extremely beautiful what would you do with akbar new design buy them as they are extremely beautiful ini sudah menjadi complementary sebenarnya buy them as they are extremely beautiful tapi ada satu lagi soalan dalam soalan why kenapa kamu beli sebab dia cantik tu apa kamu nak buat okay. what would you do with that beautiful piece of silk clock yang cantik tu sebab dia cantik kamu beli kamu nak buat apa Okay. Ada nama saya jawab buat baju lah Buat tirai lah no. okay, Kita bagi yang senang saja okay. And sell it for a profit Kita jual untuk dapatkan uh, Keuntungan Okay Next Jadi kita tulis dengan ayat yang penuh I would buy Akbar's new design As they are extremely beautiful And sell it for a profit Baik anak-anak Dalam soalan If you are Uncle Omar jadi kamu tak perlulah tulis if I am uncle of my Omar, I will buy apa tak perlu. Dia kata if you uncle Omar, jadi jawab I saja. I would buy akbar new design as they are extremely beautiful and sell it for a profit. Baik, ini adalah seorang yang kita kata kebat tadi, soalan hot saja. Agak tinggi yang kamu perlu fikir banyak untuk jawab. Okay, next. Ini soalan yang bunda. Uh, rearrange the sentence in sequence. Senang saja. Yang ni kita kata tadi Sequencing Type soalan sequencing Kamu hanya perlu susun balik Dia bagi dah yang pertama Akbar wanted to go to Taj Mahal To get new ideas for his design Kemudian dia buat apa? Okay Dia jual pada Uncle Omar tadi Kain yang dia dah ada Untuk dapat duit Dan apa dia buat dengan duit tu? Dia beli uh, Yes, train ticket Uh, Taj Mahal with the money and he earn Akbar bought train tickets to Taj Mahal with the money he earn dan yang akhir sekali they were inspired and with beautiful new clothes baik ini yang kita kata soalan sequencing ok clear I hope that this clear to you if you have doubts you can go through the video again and look again and try to jot down the important tips ok apa yang penting ada di situ next ini saya ambil soalan berbentuk peperiksaan ok sekarang ni kita dah bincang we have discussed the type of question and we have discussed how to answer the question now we look at the types of question when is implement bila dia diletakkan dalam soalan peperiksaan ke atau soalan latihan ke bagaimana dia meletakkan soalan jenis-jenis soalan ini dalam uh, soalan peperiksaan contohnya ok Uh, kalau tak perasa pun kita kata bagaimana kita nak tunjuk yang kita betul-betul faham satu benda yang kita baca itu baik, ini saya terpaksa durian tree and banana plant okay. there was a proud durian tree in kampung indah he was tall and strong there uh, there was a banana plant next to it, look at me I'm so strong that no one can defeat me who kuat boastful dia ni bongkak sikit dia kata dia kuat tak ada siapa boleh mengalahkan dia dear friend too much pride is harmful even the strongest will fall one day pokok uh, pisang ni kata kawan jangan sombong sangat sebab satu hari nanti dia membahayakan diri kita sendiri yang kuat pun satu hari nanti akan jatuh dia kata the durian tree did not listen to the banana plant he continued to praise himself A strong wind blew, but the durian tree remained firm. Even when it rained, the durian tree stood strongly and by spreading its leaves. At the same time, the banana plant bowed low. The durian tree made fun of the banana plant. One day, there was a storm in the village. The banana plant bowed low. As usual, the durian tree did not want to bow. The wind became so strong, the durian tree could not longer bear it. His roots were losing their grips. He fell down. There was the end of the proud durian tree. When everything was calm, the banana plant stood straight. He looked around. He saw the durian tree had fallen. What did the durian tree say? I shouldn't be so arrogant. I'm sorry. But then the banana plant replied, That's why we should always be humble no matter how big and strong we are. Okey, bila keluar macam ni, pesis macam ni, dia akan tanya soalan ini betul-betul soalan kita akan bincang satu persatu. Okey, question. Give two words to describe the durian tree. Ini listing. 
yang kamu hanya perlu list. Senang saja, kamu hanya perlu cari di sini dua perkataan yang kamu perlu terangkan tentang pokok durian. But you make inference. Senang saja yang paling mudah. Proud dengan boastful. Okay? Proud dengan boastful. I'm not going to give the meaning of the word in Malay. If you don't understand what's the meaning of proud and boastful, please use your best friend, dictionary, to refer for the meaning. Okay? Next. In your opinion, why didn't the durian tree bow? Ini soalan kebat tadi. Okay, kamu juga... Uh, Tak perlu berfikir banyak sebab ini lebih berbentuk kepada soalan inference. Kamu boleh patah balik kepada teks yang kamu baca, the text that we read just now, and you can look for the answer. Why? In your opinion, didn't the durian tree bow? Okay? The answer with the durian tree didn't bow because he was very arrogant. Dia sangat bongkak. Okay? Ada bermacam-macam jenis jawapan yang kamu boleh tulis di sini. Kenapa dia tidak tunduk? Uh, the durian tree didn't bow because he felt he feel that he is very strong. Okay? Dia rasa dia sangat kuat. Jadi dia tak tunduk. Betul juga. Okay? Cuma kamu kena bagi uh, kamu kena bagi jawapan yang logical di sini. Okay. Next. Baik ini soalan kebat yang aras tinggi tadi. It is important to be humble. Do you agree? Give your reason. Baik. Ada dua cara kamu boleh uh, tulis jawapan ini. Satu, kamu boleh pergi jawapan kamu sendiri. You can give your own answer. It's not going to be wrong as long as the sentence structure, the grammar, the spelling is correct. It is correct. But then, you can use another way by taking uh, ideas, taking ideas from the text itself to give answer. Okay. First answer. It is important to be humble no matter how big and strong we are because even the strongest will fall one day. Di mana saya ambil ini? Saya ambil ini daripada teks tadi yang last di akhir tadi kalau kamu ingat pokok pisang nasihat tu. Okey, bila ada advice pada pokok durian. Ayat ni dia guna because even the strongest will fall one day. But in the, kalau kamu nak cari jawapan atau you want to pick up the answers from the text and put it here. But you have to do it properly so that your sentence will be correct. Okay, you cannot, cannot simply just fake the whole sentence and paste it down. No, you have to think about the, the thing that we discussed earlier, answer, complementary, okay, and then only you write in the full sentence. But if you can answer in your own words, it will be very Easy. Akan jadi lebih mudah. It is simpler. Ayat kamu akan jadi lebih pendek. Nak jawab senang saja. Yes, we need to be humble so that other people can respect us. Buang yes ni pun tak apa. Kamu tak perlu pun yes ni. Okay? Kamu cuma jawab straight saja. We need to be humble so that other people will respect us. Kenapa? Kita perlu merendah diri sebab orang lain akan hormat. Okey, ini pun apa yang diajar dalam agama kita. Kita perlu merendah diri. Tak boleh buka. Okey. Okey. Saya asyik tengok jam. Saya takut masa tak cukup because I got another one, the last one to discuss with you. Okey, now. Look at, this is an, another type of question, extra question that I know. This is the last one actually. Uh, what uh, you have to do today from the what the thing we have discussed earlier on and this is how you implement it when you answer the question okay this is another type uh, of questioning kamu perlu faham kalau kamu ingat if you still remember in school cikgu ada sebut uh, peta minda peta buih carta alir semua tu you yang peta i think okay kamu perlu buat dalam cuti ni kamu boleh buat ulang kaji tentang peta i think Kenapa? Because sometimes when people ask questions, dia akan berada dalam bentuk yang ini. Baik, kita tengok cerita ini. Ampang, a 30-year-old school teacher fell victim to a snatch thief. She was on duty at the school gate when it happened. The snatch thief was on a motorcycle. He approached her and pretended to ask for directions. As she was giving directions, he suddenly grabbed her handbag, pushed her down and speed off. The guard ran to help her but failed. He managed to see the registration number of the motorcycle. The guard helped the teacher and 
took her to the school office. The headmaster telephoned the police. The, sorry, two policemen came to investigate. The headmaster and the teacher lodged a police report at the police station nearby. The teacher was treated for some bruises at the nearby clinic. Okay, ini cerita yang diberi. Baik, yang saya kata tadi, bila uh, bentuk soalan, dia akan uji sama ada kamu faham kepada carta alir, peta minda, peta buih, yang itu semua. Dia akan bagi soalan berbentuk macam ni. Contohnya, if you understand what your teacher have taught you, so you have no problem in completing the task here. Complete the, uh, the flow map below, atas carta alir. Okay, yang pertama, the teacher was... Apa yang cikgu tadi buat tadi awal kita baca, the teacher was duty at the school gate. Yang kamu perlu ingat dalam carta alir ini, satu peta ini mewakili satu peristiwa yang berlaku, satu kejadian. Baik, tengok di sini pula. Apa yang menjadi lepas mula-mula, the teacher was on duty at the school gate. Apa yang berlaku kemudiannya? A snatch thief, tengok ayat yang terakhir, push her down. Ini yang terjadi. A snatch thief grab her handbag and push her down. Dekat tu je. Kemudian, apa yang berlaku? Tengok ayat pertama. The guard ran to... Apa Pak Gat buat? Ran. Ada yang kata... Help her but fail. Bantu dia tetapi gagal. Apa yang berlaku berikutnya? The headmaster. Apa guru besar sekolah itu buat? Lagi kita tengok tadi. Okay. Telefon the police. Kemudian, the teacher was at the clinic. Okay. Ada... Uh, anak murid yang jawab, the teacher was sent at the clinic. Jawab semudah itu tak. Kamu tengok balik dalam teks tadi. Kalau kita tengok pada teks tadi tadi, kita padam balik, kita tengok sini. Okay. The teacher was treated for some bruises at the nearby clinic. Kamu perlu tengok satu persatu ayat dulu. Okay. Keuntungan soalan ini ialah the all answers are in the text itself. Kamu hanya perlu tarik uh, maklumat dan pindahkan. Kalau kamu nak jawab soalan berbentuk flow map macam ni. Jadi tak ada masalah. Treated for some bruises. Dia telah diberi rawatan penyakit luar kerana dia ada bengkak-bengkak. Okay. Now, that is the end of my question. Soalan uh, my, so my my slot today. This is the last question. Okay. I think I'm going uh, a little bit fast. Saya pergi laju sikit pagi ni sebab saya nak cuba habiskan semua ayat yang saya bincang ni. Dan kamu boleh tengok sekali lagi dan sekali lagi dan kamu boleh pause dan catatkan apa yang perlu. Okay? What you think is important that can help you, you have to go again. Dia tak boleh. Sekali saja kamu dengar dan kamu ingat kamu tak boleh. Kamu kena ulang, you have to uh, revise, revise, relearn again at least three, four times for you to remember. Okay? Now, before you ask, I want to thank you for watching and then Thank you to all our frontliners. Hashtag dictionary is your best friend in English. Okay. Now you are at home. You have to go. Uh, you have to learn on your own. So dictionary would be your best friend. And then stay at home. Please stay at home. Kamu perlu uh, ada di rumah sentiasa. Jangan keluar. And the most important thing for you now is to listen to your parents. Okey, dengarlah nasihat ibu bapa kamu. Jangan petang semalam saya nampak ada beberapa orang murid daripada sekolah mana saya tak pasti, budak sekolah lah, budak kecil. Naik basikal, naik gerak, pusing, ram. Okey, saya nampak. Kalau dapat tangkap tu, sepak hantar balik saja. Sebab kamu perlu faham, if you go out, kamu bukan saja membahayakan diri kamu, tapi kamu membahayakan keseluruhan keluarga kamu, adik kamu, ibu bapa kamu, datuk nenek kamu. Kamu buat balik penyakit dan kamu akan menyebabkan satu keluarga kamu akan sakit. Jadi, so please stay at home and listen to your parents. Dan saya ingin mengucap terima kasih banyak-banyak sekali lagi. Uh, kita semua harus bersyukur sebab kita ada pegawai-pegawai uh, di bahagian hadapan yang kuat di polis ini, di seluruh Malaysia. Our frontliners, polis, uh, JPAM, uh, nurse, doktor semua. Thank you to them. Okay, this is the end of my slot today. Uh, I wish you uh, all the best and please stay safe. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
daripada Anas bin Malik radhiyallahu anhu berkata Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam pernah berdoa Allahumma inni a'udzubika minal barasi wal jununi wal juzami wa min sayyil asqam Ya Allah aku berlindung denganmu daripada penyakit sopa penyakit gila penyakit kusta dan penyakit-penyakit yang buruk Hadis diriwayatkan oleh Al-Imam Abu Dawud dengan sanad yang sahih. 